Encouraging Reflective Practice in Others Sometimes you have to really think about something in order to fully understand it. This is especially true with complex ideas. Teaching practice is an excellent example of this. As teachers, we work in very complex systems. Each student has his or her own hopes, needs, problems, abilities, and interests. That is already extremely complex, but that's just the beginning of it. The educational context includes issues of curriculum, standards, and more. Because teaching is so complex, teacher development requires reflective practice, which is a type of critical thinking. Reflective practice means thinking critically about one's experiences in order to better understand them and improve one's practice in the future. Critical thinking is hard work. Other people can help us in this hard work by actively listening to us and offering us thought-provoking ideas, information, and questions. Let's look at the seven techniques for active listening and see how they can encourage reflective practice. And after we do that, we'll look at a few other techniques for encouraging critical thinking and reflective practice in others. Number one, use your full attention to read the posts. You are unlikely to give meaningful feedback to someone if you do not fully understand what they are saying. You need to give your full attention to the other person to make sure you understand what they are saying. Number two, reflect before responding. Some reflection on your part is necessary. First, are you sure you understand what the other person is saying? Next, what is it that this person needs to critically examine? How can you help him or her to do that? Number three, make sure you understood what the other person wrote. In unit two, we saw some ways that you can make sure that you understood. Many of these include clarifying questions. When the other person answers you, he or she may become clearer about his or her ideas by explaining the situation better. Because of the wait time between responses in our written discussions, you might want to save time. Instead of simply asking for clarification, you can restate or summarize what the other person is saying and see if they agree with it. Number four, recognize the emotional side. There are many emotions connected to experiences like teaching and intercultural encounters. If the person you are talking to thinks you do not understand this, they may not want to discuss the experience with you. Number five, offer alternatives. Here we are really starting to get into the active work of encouraging reflection. If we can offer alternative interpretations, we are helping the other person to see multiple points of view, which is at the heart of critical thinking. Number six, share your point of view, knowledge, or experience. All of these can also help the other person to consider other interpretations and perspectives.